Hello, so I'm going to go over how you set up a custom scheduling algorithm called Free Space Repetition Scheduler uh, for Anki. So this is kind of based on some research um, uh, that, that has been done with my memo, which is it's, it's another memoization app, um, and this research was published, and it basically allows you to train a Markov model which is, um, it's, it's basically machine learning, to, for layman's terms, um, that models memory well. Um, and this means you can better predict when you will have forgotten information, which means the scheduler can be more efficient with when it tells you to review a flashcard. Um, and therefore, you can either reach a higher retention rate with the same amount of work, um, so this means like you could be reviewing 100 cards a day and get, you know, maybe have 92% retention rather than 90% retention. Or you can aim for the same retention rate and not have to do as many flashcard reviews, which is which is kind of the strategy I took. Um, so basically it's a way of reducing your Anki workload. Um, so and I'm going to guide you through kind of how to set this up. And firstly, yeah, it, it's, it's a machine learning algorithm. Um, there is a way of doing it with default parameters, but I think it's most effective if you train on your own data. And um, this tutorial is going to go over how you how you teach, uh, how you train this model on your review history, so it learns what your memory is like, how easy your cards are to remember, um, your memory patterns. And so this is aimed best at people who have been using Anki for, for a while. Um, and are, are, you know, in the pattern of doing it every day, um, uh, but and they just want to make their reviews a bit more efficient. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to this uh, this link, which is basically the source code of their FOS, FSOS for Anki optimizer. And I'll link this in the description so you can go click that. Um, and we're going to hit this opening collab link. Um, so I've just got some weird bug with Colab, which makes it a bit annoying to upload files to do this. So I'll kind of guide you past that. So we're just going to wait until this finishes connecting. Okay, so now it's finished connected, connecting. We're going to go to our Anki. And then we're going to click on the top left, File, Export. And then we're going to export this. You can untick Include Media, as that's not relevant. Uh, but keep support older uh, Anki versions ticked. Then Export and downloads, so we're just going to save it there. Okay, then we can go to file, uh, downloads. Uh, I've been having some issues with um, with uploading this as a .col package, so I'm going to recommend you rename this, change the, uh, just rename this to blah.txt. Um, we can ignore this, this is fine. Uh, if you can't see the file extension, um, Oh yeah, I've, I've had some blahs before from when I was doing this myself. Uh, if you can't see the if you um can't see the file extension, um then come to the top view show um, and tick file name extensions and just re make sure this is renamed to blah.txt. <clears throat> um or if you're on a different operating system, do this. However, you change file name extensions on your operating system. Uh, so then we're going to click on files here, and we're going to drag over there to upload it, and that we don't care, we know it's not going to be saved. I'm sorry, uploading that. And then once this is uploaded, we'll change it back to the correct uh, file extension. So while waiting for that to upload, you can come down here and change the file name to blah.txt, uh, not .txt, actually, .col package, and then we'll wait for that to finish uploading. Um, and this was just to bypass this bug where Google Colab would refuse to upload it as a .col package. I have no idea why it was doing this, um, but I'm kind of telling you to do this just in case the bug happens for you as well. Okay, in classic uh, Google fashion, um, it, the file uploading works better on Google Chrome, so I've switched over. Um, so if you've got Google Chrome installed and you're having issues on Firefox, then try switching to that. But anyway, we could rename this to have .col package on the end. Um, and then like that. Um, it's possible that we didn't need to rename the file in the first place, but that was what I was doing before to try and get it to upload on Firefox. 
Um, so then you want to enter the correct time zone. Um, I'm from the UK, so I'm going to do Europe, um, Europe slash London. But you can see a bunch of time zones here. So just find your kind of like capital city or wherever it's like relevant to, the, to your time zone. Um, it's a bit annoying, like, I don't know, I guess you, can, you might better do GMTs. Um, but like like GMT and increments. Uh, yeah, this is what I this is what works for me. Um, okay, and then we want to click one uh, in order. So just come through. I'm I'm doing it like this just to kind of like lead you through what the code's doing. So what this does this extracts into a nicer format basically. Um, so you should see a bunch of files appear on the side here. Uh, once it updates, and then we run this. And there's a bit later on where you want to kind of train it for longer than it recommends um, by default because like I noticed the parameters were still changing um, so a longer training period I think it's better for some stuff later on but anyway we'll let it we'll let it do this okay so now we're going to come down here to define the model and um, I think we can just click go on that and then train the model this way I want to change it and um, I, I think this n epoch works better on a higher value so we're going to set that to 5, um, and then we're going to run. Um, and then while this is going, we're going to install the FSRS for Enki helper add-on. Um, so I've already got it here. So um, yeah, so we can, uh, you can come here. I'll, I'll link this in the description. Um, and then you come down. Um, right at the bottom, there should be this code. Just copy the code. Um, get add-ons, paste it in like that, and then click OK, and that should download it for you. And this has some quite useful features. So, for example, you can reschedule all your cards to now be based on um, on this scheduling algorithm with the rescheduled cards. And I also think these two options are useful because if we look at my um, yeah my reviews, it's very even. Which, if that load balancing was was not on, it would not be this even and nice. And so it's basically useful for having a consistent workload. Um, so that's nice. How about, yeah, well, I'll cut back once the training is finished. Okay, so the training is finished. Um, you can see kind of what I meant and why I recommended increasing the N epoch. Um, is that like this is kind of still like this last section is still kind of going down. Um, but yeah, so we can, anyway, we can go here and just click run that. And now we've got some recommended parameters. Um, so go ahead and copy those. Um, like so, just copy. Um, and then we'll carry on because it gives us a recommended retention rate, which is quite cool. Although this is an experimental feature, so you can come down, just keep running all these boxes. Um. And we have one of these, I think it's yeah, this one, optimize retention to minimize time of reviews. This will give a recommended retention rate. And although it is experimental, so you can choose whether you actually want to go ahead with this. Um, in the interest of time, I'm just gonna carry on with kind of how you install FSOS. So we'll go to the home page. Um and then FSOS for Anki Scheduler. Now this is for the Qt6 version of Anki. Make sure you're on a recent Anki version. Um, and also one thing you want to do is you want to come to, uh, where is it? Tools, Preferences, Scheduling. Make sure V3 Scheduler is enabled, otherwise this will not work. Um, and now, now just copy this entire file. So this is basically the code of the scheduler that we're going to make Anki use. So come in, uh, click on the cog, options, um, and scroll to the bottom. This will apply to all decks. Um, there are ways of making it apply to only a few decks um, that you can do through the code, and you can just read the code if you want to know how to do that. But for most users, this is fine. So basically, we're just going to paste this into the box. Obviously, I've already got mine here, so I'm not going to do that. Um, and then you want to come down to W. Um, and you want to um, go to where W was, uh, copy this. 
and then you want to paste it over W, like that. And then if you want to change the retention rate, you can done here. By default, request retention is 0 0.9. Mine's 0 0.87 because I've worked out that works best for me. Um, and so you can start at the uh, retention rate, this experimental thing generates for you. Um, but otherwise you can try give 0 0.9 and go. Uh, so if you want to test the retention rate, just come to tools, FSOS for Anki, reschedule all cards. Um, and then you can look how many cards it's telling you to do, if that's too much. Uh, uh, but the one thing to note is the first one time you reschedule your cards, you will likely have a few more cards than you do under the default Anki scheduler, just because um, obviously different schedulers, they think you need different amounts of work. Um, and this and this one is more likely have caught um, cards you will have forgotten. Um, but yeah, so anyway, so you reschedule the cards, you'll probably get a few more, but you can just go in and change the retention rate a bit. The request that request retention parameter um, here. You just change that, reschedule cards until it's, a, it's about the right amount of work for you per day. Um, and that's, yeah, that's kind of everything. Um, I hope you found this useful. Um, you can, yeah, you can kind of engage in that GitHub community. You can talk on r slash Anki about FSOS, FSOS if, um, you know, you have any opinions on it, um, and talk about how well it's gone for you. I think it's very useful and has helped me cut down the amount of um, cards I have to review per day on Anki. So it's been very useful for me. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching. If you found the guide useful, give it a like, share it to anyone else who uses Anki you know, um, and enjoy, you know, doing fewer reviews a day and still being on top of your studies. Bye!